Good morning, Danusha. How are you? How are you? I'm all right today. Better feeling somewhat better today. Yes. Yeah. Right. We can start now. So today we discussed last time a uh, little bit about the importance of non-financial performance measures because. You know, traditionally, we have been always measuring success failure in terms of financials. So we look at the return on capital, we look at the RI, we look at the ROI, all that kind of thing. But somewhere in 1991, it was thought and it is believed now, the financial success will come only if you meet certain non-financial successes or you must be looking more of customer, looking more of your employee, looking more of your product or services what you are going to give. So that's simply what we call balance scorecard. So let's look at something on that area today so that we get an idea of this. So basically when you look at the financial indicators, it basically fixes you for a short period. You are thinking only one year because you are looking at the return on capital for a particular year. Current assets to current liabilities on a particular day. So your, your mindset immediately gets into a fixed short term period, maximum one year. Particularly if the measurement is done on a quarterly basis, even it may get fixed up on a quarter. You are thinking just about the quarter. So last week I was looking at the, our church, the way that they were doing the financials. Uh, what I saw was even including some of the priests, just because the quarter was ending, they saw there was some balance in the medical allocation for them. They have gone all over to do all sorts of medical tech just to spend that money because they thought it must be spent. The reason is they are thinking very short term. But Beyond this, when you go to the strategics level, we must be, we are taught to always to look at the long term. In the managerial also, we should be looking at at least the medium term. Short term goals are not good enough because when you think of short term goals, you might forget the far ahead, think doing things in the short run, which can be very, very damaging in the long run. I remember long time back, whenever we want to recruit accountants, we were thinking all the time recruiting unqualified people or partly qualified people without because we thought they were cheaper. So the idea was to reduce the cost in the short run. But that had a massive impact effect on ultimate strategies, ultimate future of the companies. This is exactly what has happened to the government sector today. Government sector, they are unable to do the financials in a proper way because they can't attract the qualified people for their salaries because they want to go on a low budget and what they do is they go for unqualified people and surely the quality of accounting quality of reporting has come down so you get restricted to a limited time period you are thinking about a one year quarter one month something like that and you are not thinking of the future you are not even there is no indication of what's going to happen tomorrow. Just somehow manage that is what earlier in most of our companies, there was something that was called window dressing. What we do is just before the end of the balance sheet, we want to see all the ratios are good. So we will do certain things, bring some inventory, reduce inventory, do some fictitious sales, all that to keep the ratios as at that particular day, all right. Next day, you just get away. 365 days get away, come back on the 365th day, keep the things right. So that was what we call window dressing, doing some kind of a makeup for the financial state. So that way, this is another limitation in our financial industry. They can be manipulated. You know, the accountants are very smart people. They know how to manipulate the figures. They can provide depreciation on reducing balance method. They can provide depreciation on straight line method. They can wait without providing depreciation, show big profits. I was working in the water sector a long time back. The very first year when I joined, 
when I prepared the financial statement, it ended up with a big loss for the very first time in that the water board for the very first time. And I was wondering what's wrong with me. I have prepared the financial statements in the right manner, but I have ended up with a loss. All the other years in my previous predecessors period, all profits. And whenever they had profits, not that whenever, every time they had profits, every employee, including the chairman, the, manager, the general manager, the, the DGM finance, all the people got a massive bonus if you show a profit. So what they have done is they have prepared the financial statements in the previous years without providing depreciation. Without providing depreciation, they have shown profits and everyone has got big bonuses. I prepared the financial statements according to the right way after providing depreciation and ended up with a loss. And you can imagine, this was just somewhere around about December and about 8,000 people inside the company, they were going on strike. Because they said the new deputy general manager finance does not know how to prepare the financial statement. He has prepared the financial statements wrongly and they have shown a loss and therefore we are not going to get a bonus and therefore they were thinking of stopping water for the entire nation just because of one man somewhere in 1996 December. I was in a real crisis because I did not know what to do but I knew I, what I have done is right. Even though I, am, I myself was going to lose the bonus, so a lot of, there were a lot of pressures, everyone said, why don't you do the same way as what the previous man has done? Manipulate the financial statement, show a profit, don't provide depreciation, and then you will get a bonus. All the people will get a bonus, no problem, no disturbance. But I said, I can't do that. Because our code of ethics says we must be full of integrity. We must do it in a professional competency. So the year 16 says we must provide depreciation. So then finally, it so it, it so happened. It was so difficult. It was a crisis period. Ultimately, the president Chandika Bandaranaike had to intervene, speak to the people, speak to me, and what he said was okay. Let Kumar prepare the way that he thinks right. Let the auditor general do the audit. Once the audits, auditor general says everything is right, we will decide what we are going to do. And the Auditor General decided that what I have done is right. So, you can say the financials can be manipulated. They are essentially short term and they don't match up with your strategic goals. Strategic goals are very long term. And sometimes because of that, you might sacrifice your quality. You might sacrifice your efficiency. You might even sacrifice your motivation. So because of that, there was a need for non-financial indicator. So there are a range of non-financial indicators and they are based on non-financial information and they basically flows out without any accounting input. I mean, it has nothing to do with your double entry. It has nothing to do with your financial reports. It is basically things like customer satisfaction. Things like employee turnover. They are not coming from your financial statement. But it will explain many things. So it is coming out without any accounting in financial statements to measure your non-financial. So they will give more timely performance indicators. Last week I had to go to Durden's last Sunday. When I went there, what I saw was the super, super efficiency of the, the nurses in the eye center. So immediately I realized the customer service there was super, super the way that they were working like ants, running about, getting things done, all that kind of a thing. So they are more day-to-day -day indicators. They are today's indicators. You don't need to wait one year financial statements to know how well you are doing it. Immediately you will realize that the things are happening. In fact, the moment I came, I spoke to the chief and CEO of the Durden's Hospital and said, last time when I went, it was a very horrible experience. But this time when I went, it was a beautiful experience how these nurses were working. So the, the CEO spoke to me and he said, you know, they, they did a lot of changes and um, 
motivation and the people have now got uh, some kind of energy to work. And you can see those things immediately. Where are the financial indicators? You probably will have to wait till the court, till the end of the month, till the um, year end to know of success, uh, success or failure. They are not subject to manipulation. They are not subject to distortion. Not that they are not. At least they are less likely to be subject to distortion. It is something, you know, you do a customer survey, you can find out how good the service is. Today, if you go to the Facebook, you can see lot of complaints, lot of bouquets, lot of compliments about the services of various institutions, various restaurants, all that kind of thing. So, uh, they are not subject to the financial manipulation kind of a thing. It's coming more from the heart of the people. So, generally, these things are to do with the long-term strategy. Financial, essentially short term, because you get restricted to a period of time. But non-financial will go for long-term strategy. What gets measured gets done. When you are measuring customer satisfaction, you will get customer satisfaction. When you are measuring the quality rejects, you will get quality rejects reduced. So the moment you start measuring, things get happening because the people get a child, people get alerted to what it is being measured. So, basically, they are what we call key success factors. The things that we need to be doing right all the time, which will decide, which we generally call critical success factors, what we need to do to make it a success or a failure. Right? So, this time we have the case study is all about the managerial case study is all about this single price point unit like the dollar stores in Sri Lanka we don't have too many but in foreign countries we have this one dollar shop one euro shop so this time the case study is all about that kind of a thing now one of the critical success factors for one of those companies is not the it's not the profitability it is all about having a range of goods available for the people who visit these places will be able to buy many of the products in that shop without moving into the supermarket. Sri Lanka, we don't have enough. But I suppose in time to come, that will be the trend. People will go for this single price units, single price points. I've seen something in Nare and Peter, something 100 to be shop or something like that. But where everything will be sold at one single price. So, uh, basically, you the, the non-financial indicators will be the areas where success or failure will come right by doing the things right, and that's what we call critical success factor. Now, for example, in airline, the most critical success factor is the public perception of safety. You can be the best airline with the best airplanes, but if the people perceive that safety is not there, people will not go through that line. We saw in Malaysian Airlines, people were not prepared to go fly Malaysian Airlines at one time when there were many hijacks, etc. happening. So, the way to show to the world is to show, look here, it's not our profit. Look here, our customer satisfaction level. Look here, our people's response. That is what makes it a success. So you can see how important the non-financial measures are. It can be quantitative. It can be qualitative. It can be in numbers. It can be in some kind of a quality. Now, the other day when I went to the Dirtons, what I saw was not the quantity, but what I saw was the quality of the nursing staff. The way that they were working with Dr. Charit Fonseca, going up and down, moving from one room to the other, it was a quality. You can't measure it in quantity, but what I saw it in my eyes was the super quality of those young girls who were really working very hard, that kind of a thing. So what are the non-performance measures and financial measures? As far as the competitiveness is concerned, you can measure it by sales growth by products or services. 
So in the dollar shops, they measure it by the, the kind of the number of shoppers. How many people visit the shop for a week? And how many times do they visit the same customer visiting the shop? So that kind of a thing. So it's the sales growth by products or service, it's not the total value. It's the number of uh, the products that they introduce in the week. Size of customer base. How many customers do they have? 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, that kind of a thing. Market share by product, service, or customer growth. What kind of a market share we have over our competitor? Now, these are not coming from your financial statement. They are coming from all your management accounting inputs. So, this is where our management accountant role becomes so important. Regular market surveys, both internal and external, being used to compile the reports. We can find out from the customers how our response is. We can find out from our internal reports what are the new products we put into the departmental store this week, how many new products came into the thread this week, all that kind of thing in a hospital, how many new customers came in, how many uh, customer complaints came in, uh, what are the waiting time last time, what are the waiting time this time, all sorts of things are the things what we can use. Activity level. So one is the competitive level, the other one is the activity level. Number of units sold, again not from the financial statements, but from your own internal management information, the number of units sold. Because sometimes, I remember I was working in a company, the, the sales were increasing and they were very happy because the, the volume was increasing, they were very happy. But they did not realize the increase was mainly due to the price increases, not due to the quantity increases. So they were very, very happy with the, you know, saying our revenue has grown by 10%, but they didn't realize they have increased the prices by 15% and that is why a 10% increase has happened. But that's not the real growth. We must do the real growth through the number of products, number of units in the store. Labor and machine hours work, right? That will tell us, okay, our machines last year, it was 100,000 machine hours. This time it has worked 120,000 machine hours. So we have been doing more productivity, more labor hours. Number of passengers carried, it's not the airline profitability. How many passengers did we carry last time? Average, this year how much did we carry? Number of overdue debt collected, it's not the, it's not the receivables that is outstanding, but overdue debt over the credit period. Last time how much did we collect? This time how much did we collect? is credit collection activity. Relevant information could be drawn mainly from internal sources. So all this information is available inside the company through various reports. We can get that one. But nothing is coming from your financials. Productivity. Manufacturing cost per unit sold. Again, it's rupees and cents or dollars, but it is not coming from your financial statements, you have to work it out separately and see the cost per unit sold this year, cost per unit sold last year. Our minister in charge of the water board was asking me last time about, you know, the, they, they want to increase the water prices. They were trying to find out the cost per unit of water sold 10 years back and the cost per unit of water sold today. So, very important, this information these are all non-financial, even it has a financial uh, flavor. Capacity utilization of our facilities, of our machine. Last year we utilized 80% capacity. This year we have utilized 90% capacity. Labor, we were 90% last year. This time we have come down to 80 because many union unrest problems and that has affected our labor utilization. Average number of units produced per day. This is something to do with the learning curve. It's all about the, the, the learning. How many units we can produce per day last year? How many units we are producing now? Setting up time for the production run. Last year it took 45 minutes. This year it is taking 40 minutes. Good. 
most of the information will be from again internal sources you can see most of this information is available internally except the customer area we are looking for external information all the other information is available internally inside your organization these are some of the short questions that may come up they might put up certain things and ask to get this information is it internal or external quality of service how many rejected units how many units failing whilst in service now for example a company supply air conditioners they may want to know how many air conditioners they sold how many have failed whilst in service kind of a thing number of visits by reps to customers that's another good quality if your rep is i i was working in a company i have insisted the rep should visit four times a month whether the customer buys goods or not and i used to monitor i have given them a little bit of a book they are they have to enter every time when the customer visit when you visit the customer not that not that the customer is going to buy every time when you visit but it's a good thing to visit them to know that we are looking after the customer but at sometimes we have to be very carefully matching that one because i see sometimes in the in the modern era with the telephones being available sometimes the so called customer service units of various companies they will give a call and ask sir how is our service this that and the other you go on complaining the same thing all over things they say sir yes we will attend to it but tomorrow morning also they will give the call and ask the same thing so just before you came online i was on a telephone call to the this so called american premium water last three weeks every day they give me a call and ask why i am not buying water i say you all are not coming and delivering the water so the girl says sure sir tomorrow i will send the water again two days later she give a call and ask why are you not using our water so i say you all are not coming send the vehicle then another two days later again she gives a call and ask sir why are you not so they are not keeping a record of the conversation they just go by the system when they see prema kumar fernando has not bought water they give a call this morning also the girl gives me a call and she says sir why are you not said how many times i have told you miss i am willing to buy your water but they are not coming they are not delivering them so today as she says sure sir i will send so i waiting to see whether they send it so we have to be careful uh, we can visit we can give calls to the customers but if we don't go on acting people may get annoyed so when they keep on pressing and asking the same old thing without being action the idea is with all this feedback we will have action it's not just to get a report and to file it it is to make improvements all the time the word we have is improvement continue to improve we are on a on a on a on a day to day we are on a kaizen system we must do continuous improvements total quality management is all about continuous improvements number of new accounts gained or lost now this is a very important one you can gain new accounts but what about the customers lost i was working in a company all the time i used to be looking all the time with a very sharp eye the customers who have not purchased from us for last three months that means those customers are lost so i want to know why we lost it was it our bad service was it the competitors better product something so it's just getting these reports and acting upon these reports these are very very important things what we can do it and these are more useful for your managerial case study when it comes up because these are the factors we can use to make that company a better managed company number of repeat customer orders now for restaurants we go to a restaurant and we eat if the food is good if the service is good if the price is good we will go second time third time fourth time if we are that means that their product is good customer service is good but if you are not having repeat customers surely that is the end of the story so recently we went to i can't remember some place and we ate the food was horrible prices were so expensive 
and uh, so they were they were asking us to write some comments on the thing so one of my friends who was there she he is a very harsh fellow he wants to write the comments so then uh, one of the people said let me write the comments so i wrote the comments then of course my friend said anyway you can write any whatever the comments we are never coming to this place again so they lost a uh, opportunity to get repeat customers because the service was horrible food was horrible everything was horrible so that will show people are not coming people are not making a second visit to those places it is mostly internal you can get almost all this information to your systems but also to customer service if they are given a if they have asked us a survey will you be visiting us next or will you recommend us to another party we will definitely say no and they should take that one serious and they must know why we are saying no and they must improve this is the idea so customer service is a very important thing that you can you can see this happening so the time when you buy something from internet online they will immediately send a feedback and ask how was the product did you did it get delivered on time will you buy it again will you recommend us to another person 1 to 10 unlikely to most likely and you can rate it so these are the things what the modern world is doing through all these things non financial performance customer satisfaction average time taken to respond to customer inquiry when the customer inquires about something how long does it take two days one day one hour 15 minutes that kind of a response time express customer satisfaction with say staff sometimes the people when they are very happy they will immediately say they are happy you will see that when you go to places like kfc uh, they say they have a little bill if you are satisfied with the quality of the service and the food you ring that bell immediately the staff will know wow those people have appreciated the service if you go without ringing the bell maybe either they were not aware or they were not happy with the service so immediately just kind of a thing you will know express customer satisfaction with technical staff sometimes you may not tell the sales people but you will tell the technical people wow i was satisfied i did not tell those nurses that i was satisfied with but their service but immediately i came and spoke to the ceo and said your service was superb so that's the kind of a response you might get number of customer complaints as much as the satisfaction we must look at the complaints how many complaints there is get thousands of complaints i was talking about good service another one of my friends was talking about a bad service she was discharged at 8 o'clock in the morning by the time the bills were prepared and everything done it was 4 o'clock in the evening horrible service so she was complaining about that one so people will have in one area good one area bad one two months back three months back i complained about the i area saying horrible service so people can i think when i asked them they said i they took my message very seriously they have done lot of motivational classes for the nurses and things have improved but they have to continue to do it human beings we forget things very fast and we go back to our bad behavior all the time unless we keep on doing it so these are very very important thing. most of the information will come from customer service it is the customer feedback it is not what we perceive i was working in a company we were always thinking our customers are very happy with us till we went to the customer and started surveying then only we realized oh how unhappy they are with our products with our services with the quality of everything what we were provide so the way to go forward is a customer service so these are the ot questions you might get this kind of a thing you can only get it through a good independent customer survey i saw the managerial case study this time they have done a little bit of a customer survey they want to know why the people are visiting for this uh, so called uh, so called 
dollar shops or single price unit why the people are visiting for these places so they have done a little bit of an analysis and they have found many of the reasons why the people visit and one of the main reasons why they visit is the affordability today people are struggling with all their uh, scenarios so one of the reasons why they just come up is because of the affordability that people are struggling with the cost of living so one way is to go into these small shops these dollar shops buy their products in smaller quantities you would have seen today when we go to the supermarkets we we see this one kilo packet of milk food 400 grams of milk food but we see little ones 100 grams 50 grams things also because the people are struggling people don't have money to buy a one kilo they have only little money so they come to buy a little pack so it is simply the people visit these shops for affordability reason the other one they visit is range of products the range of products they see a wider range of products so that gives good information to you to serve the customer you must have a range of products you must make the products affordable the third reason is the location it, uh, the, the shops must be located at convenient location there are other things like retailers reputation the people don't worry about the retailers reputation just four percent of the people thought about the reputation because they go to single price shops one dollar shop they are basically they want to buy cheap products they are not worried about the reputation all day but maybe at a higher level people upper level people they will be bothered about the reputation they don't want to go and eat in a small tose kadi. they want to go and eat tose even at hotel hilton because of the reputation they cannot be uh, seen in a small place eating tose even though it's good quality tose still they want to go to a big hotel and eat and spend big money that is to maintain the debt that's a different kind of a customer segment so you must know what your customer segment you must know exactly how to deal with them and work customer service staff experience so remember one of the key factors is the good quality staff so if the staff is very happy they will take little leave right they will not put sick medical leave all that kind of thing they will want to go to work even the students even the schools we see this one happening right when they are happy in the school you want to go to school i remember dinusha when she was there uh, every day she wants to go to school even on a rainy day sometimes we say stay she wants to go to school because she was enjoying the school life all the time right so um, my little granddaughter who is in bangladesh every day she wants to go to school because they give marks and some kind of a thing and they want to be in the school so uh, people won't get absent when you are happy and when you are when absence, the absenteeism costs a lot of money to the company and service will drop. Staff turnover rate. You remember we were discussing in the labor learning curve. Uh, we must not have a very high staff turnover rate. I was working in a company uh, at one time. Every one month there are hundreds of people leaving, hundred people joining. It was a crazy situation. I wonder mean, what's going wrong in that company. No one seems to be satisfied working there. They come, they go. Sometimes they come, next day they are not in office. To see they have gone, they have resigned. Not, they have not even sent the resignation. They have gone to some other place. Staff turnover. We have to understand why it is. That shows the quality of the staff. Number of new qualifications achieved by the staff. The the staff training today we see a lot of these companies spend a lot of money on things like um, uh, mbs etc to make their staff even sima subscription paid sima exam fees paid by some companies because they want to have qualified staff when you have qualified staff they are much more professional they are much more ethical that way you can minimize many of your other problems which arises from unprofessionalism, unethical acts. 
express job satisfaction. You can find out how satisfied your people in the job. Qualification level of new staff. Right? When you recruit people, we do are we are we recruiting qualified staff or are we rec recruiting unqualified staff? One of the one of the uh, good internal control measures of in a good control environment. One of the key aspects is to have quality staff, qualified staff. That is why uh, we see, unfortunately, sometimes in the Facebook and in the press, I see in the parliament, we have many people who are not even O-level qualified. So naturally, you can't expect them to be great leaders leading this nation into the, you know, uh, big future. So we are in trouble. We don't have good qualified people in the parliament who are our national leaders. And similarly, it will be with the companies. If you don't have qualified people, that is why we encourage people to get themselves educated. The parents are spending a lot of money on the children because we know qualification is something that will matter a lot. Exit interviews and staff opinion surveys. Exit interview is a very, very important one. Whenever you are leaving a company, the HR must interview you and find out the reasons for your leaving. Because when you are leaving, you will be much more open, much more transparent, much more frank, and you will see why you are leaving. Those interviews are very, very important. Because uh, sometimes what happens is we don't, uh, when you are working, we might not be wanting to tell the very frank opinion because if I go, if you go and tell something against your boss, if the information is leaked out to the boss, you will be in real trouble. But when you are leaving, you can boldly say, I'm leaving because that boss is a horrible fellow. I don't want to work with him, that kind of. So exit interviews are a good, good way to find out about your non-financial performance about the staff experience. So these are important as any company that can make things much more better all the time. Innovation, this is another area. Number of new products brought to the market. This dollar shops, their key success is to bring weekly new products. Because the people are visiting these places very frequently. So if you have the same old products all the time, there is no attraction for them to come and spend their time but introduce new products so when you go tomorrow then you will say some new product you will go and tell your friend hey there's a i saw some new products in this company so there's another person will go that's the way to get more shoppers and today we can see the old companies or the old establishments who have lived with only few products without any innovation they are just going out of the market you have to keep on introducing new products Customer taste is changing. Customer uh, uh, buying habits are changing. So we have to keep on catering to that one true new product. And that is why research and development is so important. We must go on doing research and development. Proportion of sales of new products. If you are getting all our sales from the old products, we are in a real danger. Because the reason is, Every product has what we call a life cycle. Introductory, growth, maturity, and a decline. So every product will reach a decline state. So if all our products are at the decline state, your maturity state, and if there are no new products in the pipeline, surely we are into a very dangerous space. We must continue to have new products all the time and measure how much of our new products are getting sold in the market. Technical lead relative to competitors. How advanced we in our technology compared to our competitors. Do we have a website? Do we do delivery to homes? That kind of a thing. Can we provide after sales service? The technical lead, the technology can we find out what the customer wants through these customer loyalty cards, etc.? 
can we find out the birthday of our customer, send them a birthday cake or cookies or something like that? All these are technical lays. I saw one of the insurance companies, I had a policy and, uh, you know, every year for the birthday, they are one of the first people to send an SMS saying happy birthday all day. I uh, got that policy matured, collected the money, but even then, they say, thank you policy holder, holder happy birthday all day. So then I wrote to them and I said, look here, uh, now I'm no longer a policy holder, so all that kind of a thing. So they have not updated their records. It's all right wishing a birthday for a birthday, but to say a policy holder and wish is crazy. The wish is dead and gone. But sometimes I still see some people sending birthday cards for Dinusha, uh, some of these establishments, some are sending wedding anniversary cards for Dinusha. So I keep on telling them, look here, she is dead and gone. So um, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to uh, update yourself. So that's what we call technology. It's not having a system, but keeping the system updated. Lead time to bring new products to the market. Today, we live in a very fast world. Things are getting leaked out in a flash of a second. So, uh, we don't have too much of time when you're introducing a new product, too much of time to, you know, keep on announcement, announcing. Before we, we do that, the competitor might enter the market and take the market. So, we have to cut down on lead time when we decide today, next two, three weeks, months, maybe, we must introduce the product. You can't wait for one year saying we are coming out with the product, coming out with the product, all that kind of a thing. The information will get leaked out. Even if you try to keep it confidential, it's so difficult with all these technology, etc. Uh, people will get information leaked out. So, lead time to bring new products must be somewhat very best. This kind of information, we can get it to an external consultant. Because these are not something what we may have. We may have some other things internally, but an external consultant will be able to gather this kind of information. One of the ways we measure our performance is through a very famous term called benchmarking. Right? It is a way to continuously improve our standard, we compare with the best of the best our way and then see where we are may not matching and we try to match up to the best of the best. So basically, it is something what we call, there's a SIMA definition. So wherever there's a SIMA definition, we must be very, very careful to know the definition very well. So it is, a, uh, it is something like establishment to data gathering of targets and comparators that permit relative levels of performance to be identified, the adoption of best practices should improve performance. So we gather data and we compare with the best to see where is our performance compared to the best. So if you are comparing, for example, benchmarking airlines, we must try and benchmark with Singapore Airlines most likely because they are the best airline. So see with them how are we faring. Don't try to compare Sri Lankan Airlines with Indian Airlines and say we are better than Indian Airlines. That's not benchmarking. You are trying to see the best practices and see how we can move into the best practice scene. It's a continuous process and against best performing. So. In school, if you are studying, we must benchmark with the, the most best student, the brilliant one, and see where am I? How can I move into that shoe? That kind of a thing. In companies, we must look at the best employee and see what he is doing different to me. How can I improve upon it? So, this can come up either internal or external. We will have a lot of information internally. We can benchmark internally one division to the other. The managerial case study we have is, is about 240 shops all over a particular country. 
so they can benchmark uh, the each of the shop against the best shop and see how many customer complaints in the best shop of one out of hundred another 10 out of 100 benchmarking and then see how we can reduce it to 1 out of 100 what are they doing different from what we do so that kind of a thing is very important so idea is simply to assess an activities how it can be improved so you can see the term that is coming up continuously in all these things what you have been discussing is improvement improvements Continuous improvement. This is your success. This is your score. Reasons for benchmarking. Why do we benchmark? Basically, the, the benchmark will tell us it's an alarm call to make the changes. Right? I, have a, I have a granddaughter and a grandson. Granddaughter is generally very brilliant. And so both of them are in Bangladesh. Uh, she has been always getting, for last three or four months they are in Bangladesh, she has been always getting the best award for various subjects, etc. But somehow the little fellow is not so, uh, not so uh, brilliant. But last week in the studies, Malli has done better than Aki and Malli has got an award for maths, the best award in the international school. Whereas Aki has not got an award and she was very disappointed because she was jealous that Mali has got it. So she, the, the elder one spoke to me and said, look here, Mali has got, I did not get. So I said, it is an alarm call for you, for you to change because you are all the time on WhatsApp, you are all the time on uh, the, the tab, you are not, you are not done your work and that is why Mali, even though not so brilliant, has been able to do it and get it. So this, these things can become an alarm call for us to make the change. We think we are doing better. I was working in a company. Every time when I talk about the competitors, my managing director says, Kuma, don't talk about the competitors. We don't have any competitors. We are the number one. He did not respond to the alarm call chain and the company collapsed. We must be all the time who is the best? Why we are not the best? We must learn from others to improve. This is very important. Always in the managerial case study, they have given us about another competitor's details. That is, the idea is to learn. What are they doing different from us? Where are their success? Where are, what is their success area? What is our success area over them? Continue to improve on our success area over them, but also see where they are doing better than us and so try to learn. So learning from others, it's all to learn from others' mistakes rather than we learn from our mistakes. Because our mistakes can be very costly, but if you can find out the, what the others are doing and learn from them, that can make things very advantageous. Gain a competitive advantage, right? Private sector, this is what they do. They try to benchmark and they try to see what more they can do it. Hotels, they are doing it very well. Insurance companies, they are doing very well. Hospitals, they are doing very well. They try to benchmark with the best and try to get that competitive advantage. In the public sector, it's all about benchmarking is to improve the services. We saw telecom coming up with a great change the moment they became from private to uh, from public to private. But if you see the National Savings Bank being in the public sector, their service has improved. Bank of Ceylon, I think the service has improved a lot. They have learned through benchmarking. Maybe they have they have benchmarked with the private sector, and they have found that. What these people do, we are not doing it. Why can't we do it? And I think now if we really look at National Savings Bank is much, much more better than even any of the private bank. The way that they respond to the customer, the way that they respond to the service. So what are the types of benchmarking we have? Internal, this is one of the famous examiner's questions in our OT paper. Internal benchmarking. 
in the same organization we can go and benchmark it. so this managerial case study we have 240 shops we can benchmark against each other look at the best shop and then say why others are not doing it internal benchmark competitive benchmarking look at the most comp successful competitor your insurance look at who is the most successful competitor and benchmark against that company and see where we are not performing what can I do better kind of a scenario all the time functional benchmarking similar functions your insurance claims department against the competitors insurance claims department right your finance department with your management accounting department similar functions your uh, life department with general similar function so you can do functional benchmarking within the function you do it. strategic benchmarking this is uh, some kind of competitive benchmarking for strategic action and organizational changes you look at strategically who is doing the best and you try to match that competitor and then do the necessary strategic action. So you can see all these things are not just for the sake of doing something. It is to stimulate some action. Beyond our thing, we must be looking to do some action. That is what we call, that is the reason for benchmarking. So how do we approach benchmarking? So basically, you try to compare appropriate metrics to identify the possible areas for improvement we try to look at the customer complaints in one particular company against our customer complaints we try to do it customer rejects we try to do it wait in time we try to do it so matrix benchmarking process benchmarking compare the process and see how is their process happening how is their claim settling process happening what is our claim settling process today we see insurance companies telling you know just send sms the claim will be settled all sorts of things are happening so look at the process of what they are doing against what we are doing diagnostic benchmarking the practice of reviewing the process of a business to identify those which indicate a problem and offer a potential for improvement look at how the others are addressing the problems whenever there's a problem how do they address it and how do we address it so maybe for example a particular product that has gone to the market which is of bad quality so now we have to respond to that one so see what is our competitors they do when they have a similar situation do they recall the product or do they make a mass advertisement? How do they do it? And benchmark it against them and do it. So the idea is finally the balance scorecard. So basically these two people said you cannot run a business by looking at one performance measure. So that was the financial and it all relates to the past. So what he said was it is not considering the value of intangibles like customer loyalty, etc., customer happiness, staff motivation, product quality, and therefore they said a balance scorecard should be incorporated, incorporating the non-financial measures, and so you will have the financials as well as non-financial. Non-financials is for the future, financials for the past. Okay. Usually we have a vision and a strategy and then a financial perspective, customer perspective, internal business perspective and learning and growth. So your vision and strategy will come from all these four. This is what it means. So these are the four purposes. Financials, 
basically you will be setting your financial targets you remember we were discussing cash flow gearing success your profit sales etc prosperity basically your market share roi so these are the three goals for measuring the finance customer customer profitability customer retention customer satisfaction customer acquisition new customers market share percentage sales from new customers number of customer complaints etc internal business percentage sales from new customers you can see some of the things are overlapping it's all right percentage sales from your own products cycle time the life cycle unit cost when it's coming down or going up new products introductions time to develop new products how long it is taking to take to the one product and how long it takes the next product learning and growth employee satisfaction employee retention less staff turnover employee productivity time to market and also percentage of products given 80% of sales that is what we call the parity principle so today we discussed earlier about the budgeting but we see now something going beyond budgeting it's not that the budgets are completely out but we don't want to get into the budget right so the budget is basically can be planned meaningfully for an extended period into the future so that can be a kind of a control coordinate activities and this is what the beyond budgeting is all about it is basically you try to take it for the future budget is generally it is done for a particular period and it's a it's a kind of a backward activity. so uh, beyond budget definition to move beyond the budget because there are a lot of restrictions in the budget and uh, basically you are you have not that you don't have a budget but you have a budget but you are not going to get restricted by the budget you are basically setting incentives for them to do something beyond this is what we call empowerment learning uh, trying to do something rather than yourself to budget so it's basically replacing the budget as a managerial tool so it's 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 using your management skills management knowledge and that's why so the basically it's to move from a business model <coughs> to one based based on devolved networks you you uh, you go down to the lower level rather than a central hierarchy the budget is generally a centralized thing but here we go into the lower levels empowering them to come out with ideas and if it is a good idea you will forget about the budget you will give them the green light to go ahead so basically in a area in an age where there is unpredictable complete competition fickle customers that is the customers are changing all the time you can the idea is you can uh, plan with so much of confidence so therefore you must have a kind of a you should not get locked into a plan make and sell like what is the annual budget try to look at something different something more flexible so customers are not going to be loyal like those days customers can shift their loyalty because you go to the website you can see many many suppliers want you to supply So basically, idea should be, but the the budget should be abolished and alternative business substituted. Managers are given goals. It's not a budget that is they are given. They are given goals, and they have to see how they are going to achieve the goals. Come out with their own resource requirements. This is the kind of a thing. 
which is working out. So you are basically driven by goals, not driven by projects. So it works with total quality management. It goes, works with business process re-engineering and it works with activity base, uh, base. It works with the balance scorecard. All that is coming up through the beyond budget. So there are six principles. Managers to be given goals. Lot of freedom to the managers. It's not the top team that is taking responsibility, but at the ground level, the frontline team. There are a lot of relationships building. It works as a one unit, the coordination. Transparent information system. Everyone knows what's happening around. These are the idea of the budget. If it's faster response time, you don't need to go to the board all the time. You don't need to wait for the budget to come up. You are empowered to come up with new ideas of so innovation. Surely lower cost. Surely improved customer and superior loyalty. So these are the things that is coming up to the beyond budgeting. So with that, we are now finished up non-financial performance indicators. The next lesson will be the important transfer pricing. How is your calendar? Shall we fix it for next week now? Uh, yeah, yes. Monday? Yeah, Monday is fine, but uh, can we do a little later? Like, uh, because Monday I'm on holiday. Holiday, no, yeah. Later. Yeah, I can manage later, no problem. What time Monday convenient for you? Uh, 11 o'clock. Okay, sure, no problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. So one day 11 o'clock we will meet again. We will do the transfer pricing. After transfer pricing, before we move, we will look at some questions in the areas what we did, and then we will go into the next areas. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'll see you on Monday, 11 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Thank take you. care. Okay.